Um, I hold a lot of tension in my jaw, so I get occasional like headaches from that, but it's not migraines or anything, and I just try to relax my jaw. So how often does that happen? How often do you get jaw tension headache? Uh, maybe for 10 minutes every day until I realize I'm holding all of my stress in my face, so then I try to not do that. I have a little bit of a bad shoulder, so I don't even know which one is bad, but they alternate. <laughs> um, so I get a pain between the shoulder blade on my left ear. Mm -hmm. um, I am a heavy weightlifter, so I'm constantly pressing 40 pound dumbbells and things, mm -hmm. and it is hard to stretch that area. Lower back, uh, my sacroiliac joints are always very, very tight, so I have issues with that um, to the point where I had actual issues with that um, probably a year ago. I had to really put a lot of work into it and stop lifting for a little bit because it was so mm -hmm. tight and needed to get a bit of attention. Uh, I do lift heavy weights, so my imbalance is a little bit more apparent uh, where my shoulders are because I do have one that is a little bit higher than the other due to the slight curve of my spine. Okay, looking at the feet first, we have a straight, a slight eversion bilaterally, maybe a little bit more on the right, but it looks pretty even symmetrically. Come back this way. Heel strike, mm -hmm. flat foot and toe off are symmetrical. Just maybe a little bit of eversion, and I don't see much decreasing of the arch either. Actually, the arches look pretty good. But the arm swing looks even from left to right. Maybe that's it. Arm swing looks even from left to right. Come back this way. The high shoulder is on the left. I'm going to assume that the high hip is on the right based on that. We'll see which way the curvature goes. Turn around and go the other way again. Okay, looking at hip swing from right to left, it looks symmetrical, but I can see we've got a little bit more favoring towards the left. Okay, high hip on the right, that was the correct assumption. And then the arches are intact, but it's higher on the right than the left, so there's an asymmetry. Go turn around the other way. Okay, no pronation, Achilles tendon is straight, no bowing there, that's good. Uh, no, I do not practice martial arts anymore. However, I trained for the better part of two decades and used to teach both adults and children. Mm -hmm. My main form was Shaolin Kempo Karate, which was complemented by boxing, cage fighting at the amateur level, as well as a couple of belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which I competed nationally in. Just looking at your spine posturally, definitely straight up and down. Your head is over your shoulders, over your hips. I don't detect any curvature here in the thoracic spine. Right at the thoracic lumbar, it's a very slight. I would never call this a scoliosis. We're going to check it one more time with the scoliosis check when you're standing up. But even if it's one degree, it's not technically a still degree. It has to be more than a 15 degree curvature to be a scoliosis by uh, the Cobb method. Scan called tone. Yeah. Study noetics. Yes. Yeah, lots of left side, uh, left side shoulder. Okay, I'm going to do a temperature evaluation now with the back of my fingers. Back of the fingers are more sensitive to temperature. Mm -hmm. All the heat is in between your shoulder blades. Mildly warm in the neck, it gets hotter here, and then as soon as we get past this level of the scapula at T7, bottom of the scapula here, here's that high left shoulder again. As soon as we get there, it cools off significantly. Good. All right, I'm gonna push a little bit deeper into the muscles. I used to get a lot of deep tissue massages, so feel free to go as deep as you need. I actually ask them usually too. Okay, I'm going to pop out your SI joints here. Any tenderness, discomfort, tension here? Uh, they are a problem area that is usually very tight for me. Let's see, how about the left one? How does the left one feel? Um, about the same as right, maybe slightly better. 
<laughs> right versus left. Um, I think right is more intense. More at the bottom or at the top? Uh, <laughs> Maybe the bottom is seven or a six out of ten. The top is seven out of ten. Close. Open. Very restricted, actually, on both sides. Good. Uh, mm -hmm. Close. Open. Okay, I'm gonna check the, the motion of your scapula. That one pops in and out, so. The scapula pop in pops in and out? I can just, I don't know, kind of almost dislocate the shoulder. <laughs> it doesn't hurt, though. Okay, let's bring your chin down to your chest. Good, back up. Down. Now bring your left ear down to your shoulder. Good right ear. Left. Let's just we're gonna check the level up. So you're gonna feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we slide this up to the glute fiber here, and then at the glute fold we see that the right one is a little bit lower than the one on the left. So that means your right hip is possibly going backwards like this, mm -hmm. that's why it has a lower fold, where the left one is going forward, that's why it has a higher fold. Then when we look from the top angle, we see which one is pressed out more or which one is in. So the right side is out more. So if these are your glute fibers, uh, this is, if this is the gluteus maximus, the right one is actually out like this more. So that means it could have been turned externally like that or the left one is turned internally. Good, okay, let your head relax. That was a nice crack. It was like right underneath my hand. <laughs> okay, looking for rib pumping. There's no curvature here whatsoever. You have almost a perfectly straight spine. You can stand back up. Okay, um, lift your right leg up in the air as high as it can go. Go down. Left. Down. Your pelvis here will do the right SI joint first. Do you have any pain, discomfort, or tension when I push here like this? Uh, slightly on my spine, like that's connected to Higher it. Higher up here. Uh, down and to the right more, so it's probably the actual joint there. Mm hmm. Still your side joint. Let's see, let's go to the left side. Pain, discomfort, tension. Um, actually about an inch higher on the left side. Somewhere in there, yeah. And here, this is more lumbar. L5, any pain, discomfort, tension? No, that's fine. Four here. And that one got a lot more tension faster. Three here. Uh, yes, for that one. Two. No, that one's good. One. <laughs> a small top, but that one's good. Keeping your knee straight, you don't have to lift it up all the way, but just lift your whole right leg up in the air. Good down, okay. One more time, right, down, left, down, again left, down. Relax underneath your hips, do the right hip first, that relax. Good, okay, we're gonna do the left one now too, go down. Tender. With this side. Also tender. Okay, I'm gonna work this just the trap fibers just for a minute here to see if we can loosen this as much as possible.
nice gentle grooving. Nice gentle breathing.
You're doing great. You're nice and relaxed here. Let's practice one first just so I can feel your spine while you're breathing. Good. I'm going to follow the breath just like that. And then at the end, we'll give a little push. You're very strong here. You got a nice, very nice symmetrical. Okay, we'll start right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Deep breath in through your nose. Another deep breath in. All right, this one's a little bit different. This time we push at the top of the breath. So you're going to breathe all the way in, and then as you breathe out, that's when we push. Let's try that again. In. And out. Okay, I'm gonna remove the blocks. All right, so I'm gonna follow your breath just like the other adjustment. As you breathe out, your shoulders are gonna come up like this. I'm gonna bring your hips down like this. Then we push like that, okay? Okay. Okay, go ahead and take a deep breath in. Out. A little bit more. Good. Nice and gentle breathing. Same thing, we're just gonna bring the hip down, shoulders up. And we're gonna bring this down. Good breathing. Okay, to the right. Back to center. And to the left. Back to center. Good. And then uh, bring your right ear down to your shoulder. Center, your left ear down to your shoulder, center. Nice, gentle breathing, let's do some very gentle traction here.
Okay, I'm gonna follow your breath just like the other adjustments. We're coming in this direction like this. Good, we're gonna get to there and then give it a little push in that direction, okay? Uh -huh. Good, and something in. Good. Push your jaw to the right against my hand. Open, open. Push to the left. One more time, open. Push to the right. Just your jaw, not your neck. I've never tried to do that. <laughs> Face relax, good. Go let your neck relax here. Gentle, gentle, gentle. crack by itself? I don't, I don't think it's ever cracked. Cool. Yeah, maybe my jaw issue will go away. All right, now I'm going to crack your toes. That's the one you should go Okay, so digestive organ manipulation, we start with the ileocecal valve. We find this by finding the belly button and the ASIS here. We connect these two points, that's where we begin looking for the valve. This is the window, it's right here. This is the window between the large and the small intestine. So like if you've eaten anything in the last two and a half to four hours, this is where it would be. Here, move. Okay, this is a diaphragm manipulation. Okay, nice deep belly breathing. Breathe into your belly. Good and out.
hips are held in place by the pins, you can put your hands to your belly. Good. I'm gonna bring it. Do you use the towel around your neck? You okay with that? Yep. I'm gonna bring this to here. And this to here. Just like the other adjustments. As you breathe out, I'm gonna follow that breath. And then when we get to the end, we pull like that, okay? Okay. Okay, nice. Good. End out. Oh! God. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> well, I need to resettle into that one. <laughs> My body feels like very different now. <laughs> like I need to recalibrate myself, or I did recalibrate myself. Walk around a little bit, see what happens when you put some motion into it. Oh, it feels lighter. Mm -hmm. That's nice. My neck feels like, uh, <laughs> I don't have words. Yeah, I feel like I have a better range of motion too. That's good. Okay, look straight ahead. These are flexible elbows. Yes. So crazy. <laughs> a lot of movement there. My hand. Push. Harder. Oh. Oh, like this. Just kind of sink it. Let this arm relax here. It's crunchy in there, though. Good. <laughs> Usually jaw issues go away either when you learn how to speak your truth or you learn how to to rearrange your words so that they don't seem like as polarized. Sink beneath that and understand that the, the greater connection to everything and then speak in that way. So less I, you, me, more we, more us, and more oneness. Um, I hold a lot of tension in my jaw.